This thing here is a camcorder shoulder harness which I bought from eBay some time ago, pre-coronavirus. It's one of the most embarrassing filming apparatus I've ever seen. The promotional images are often of a middle-aged man with this thing strapped across his chest balancing an old taped video camcorder. His hands are waving in the air as if he just dropped his child, and he might also be standing next to a barbecue. This is the sort of object someone might buy to signify they had achieved the pinnacle of success in the 1980s. I myself bought this far too early in my life to really appreciate it and had left it shoveled away for such a long time that a couple sections of rubber padding had disintegrated. What I'd like to do is replace that which has been lost with some cork. This is a cork tar that I bought from a local shop. It does have some double sided tape on the back and it is a little bit thick. So I'm going to have to machine it flat as well as create the different shapes. I'm also wondering whether I should uh, replace these sections here, which is what rests against your chest, and this section here which rests against your shoulder, so that it all looks the same. And I'm gonna do this on my CNC machine, the Moot one, which I've designed and for which there is a manual that you can buy from me. But before I self-promote this, let's get on so you can see what this can actually do. The first thing I need to do is create the vector drawings of the parts I will later cut. I'm using a complementary copy of Aspire, which is an advanced cam software. I have experience using VCAR, which is a cheaper option, but I have to admit I like both. If you don't have access to this software, you can do similar tasks on software including Fusion 360 or Inkscape. The cutting capacity of the Moot One is 450 millimeters along the X axis and 350 along the Y, not including an overhang at the front. My date and position is at the bottom left hand side. I can now carefully use one of my favorite tools, the vernier caliper, to take measurements beginning with the thickness of the cork tile which is 7.8 millimeters. I also measure the tile itself, which is 300 millimeters by 300, and begin to input this information into the software. I use a variety of vector drawing tools to create the various shapes I will later machine to thickness and cut out. Vector drawings, if you are not familiar, are mathematical expressions. So they can be scaled infinitely large or small, unlike pixel images which lose resolution if made larger. They can be used by the software to plot the movement of tool paths, a bit like geographic coordinates while following a map. I like to draw simple geometric forms and align them using either the available tools or other shapes which snap onto edges and corners. The process for me is very similar to working physically with either objects or bits of paper, collaging the shape into existence. I then use the snipping or interactive vector trimming tool to get rid of the lines I don't want. This software has a neat feature of being able to rejoin lines which are spliced. In other software, you may have to check the lines and rejoin them manually into continuous ones, which later tools will need to follow. It took me about half an hour to draw all the shapes, nest them, and apply the various tool paths. I made sure to organize the cut types into a logical order, beginning by area clearing some shapes to make the material thinner, and then performing inner or center cuts before working outwards to the final shape profiles. I then performed a 3D simulation of the cut profiles to check all was well, and that the tabs or bridges were in place to hold all the pieces, preventing them from coming loose and getting damaged. Now I can export the G-code to send to the Moot1 CNC machine. I'm now setting up the Moot1, changing over to the appropriate tool, which I've specified in the tool library while creating the G-code. I will also need to home the machine to set the zero coordinates along all the axes and probe the tool so it's tipped zeros to the wasteboard surface. I then secure the cork onto the wasteboard with some cup washers and screws, fit the dust shoe and commence the job with extraction. The Moot one has taken me several years to get to and I was so happy once I did get there, I relived the entire horrid experience by writing a manual to help others get trapped in the world of CNC2. In it I only describe the process of 
building the mechanical side of the machine, plus some other relevant information, such as a list of the parts and tools you will need, including sources to get those. It's then up to the maker to decide which spindle and control system they want to commit to. There are so many choices out there, it just means there's a bit of customization available. I'm also not trying to hog up the entire market with a closed system, and makers can stretch their budget to whatever they can afford. I've estimated you can build the mechanical side of the machine plus steppers and some of the other electronics for roughly £700. That is a lot of money, but if you imagine splitting that up into stages, it might be a bit more manageable. With my current stepper motors, I can get feed rates of up to 1900 millimeters a minute. I can also easily cut into most softer materials the diameter of the tool. So in this case, I'm using a four millimeter tool, which I can plunge into the cork at four mil. And I feel confident doing this up to six mil or even eight millimeters in softwoods, MDF, Vacromat, and so on. And this information is for the CNC geeks who are probably the only people watching by now. My max instantaneous speed change is 500 millimeters a minute and the acceleration is set to 60 millimeters per second squared. So it gets to the right speed very quickly. If you're interested in the over 100 page long manual for the Moot one, I'm planning to make this available as a hygienic physical booklet that you can receive in the post along with a limited edition drawing of the front page created on a Moot one machine. I'll begin with my lovely and resilient patrons and then select individuals who have contacted me via my website, the link to which is down below. Unfortunately, we are in the middle of this horrid coronavirus pandemic, only made worse by many incompetent governments and years of austerity. So that plan won't come into fruition for many months, if we are lucky, and providing people don't get hygiene fatigue and we continue to embrace our new introverted lives and don't lose our jobs, run out of money and get kicked out of our homes. Anyway, once all the parts were cut out, I carefully freed them from the tabs using my high-vis chisel and began securing them in place with the pre-installed double-sided tape. It's not a bad cut. I think if I had my up spiral bit, it would have uh, been a little bit better. Probably could have gone a bit slower as well, but... You live and learn, or you go the way of the dinosaurs, and I don't mean the dinosaurs in Parliament. They have it luckier than most. I now check some components for quality control, I guess, and to make sure my settings were all okay. They seem to be within tolerance. I then take off the protective cover over the double-sided tape and begin attaching things together. There's no going back now. Like poor government policy. So I'm coming to the end of another video. Please feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you are interested in my manual, you can find my contact section on my website and directly email me. Although that stuff won't get moving for quite a while now. Otherwise, I hope you are all well, despite everything, and you still have enough sense to follow the guidelines by health experts and keep cocooned or quarantined and avoid unnecessary travel and contact. And if you know of anyone who might be vulnerable at this time, give them a call to check up on them. And if you're unsure about someone or a situation, you could check out a website called www.covidmutualaid.org, which is UK specific, and where you can find local groups who can provide support and advice. Okay, good luck and don't be stupid. So I can honestly say this is the most uncomfortable thing that I've worn. And the angle is pretty unflattering as well, so I'll probably never use this again. Mm -hmm.